Hello everyone, Osiris Frost here. Recently, CIG released the backer Q&A for the RSI Apollo medical ship. This video will cover that document, but this is part two in a series of videos on the Apollo. If you haven't seen the first part, it's linked up for you now. Let's begin. Question, will there be any interactive doctor gameplay to healing in med bays and first aid, or will it be automatic based around the tier of healing of a facility? Answer, the design for doctor slash medical gameplay is not fully signed off, but it currently has interactive elements to it. One of the things that we will always do with Star Citizen is to make player interactions physical rather than just pressing a button and walking away, an example being the current mining loop that requires a level of constant control instead of automatic extraction. Hmm, I'll get back to this in a minute. Question, what happens to the player while they're waiting to be picked up, transported, and healed? Are they just sitting there doing nothing the whole time? Answer. Currently, the plan is for the player to be physically immobilized during pickup, transportation, and healing. However, during the implementation process, we will review whether this is too much and if we need to provide some level of interaction. During these downtimes, we'll make sure that the player has access to feedback notifying them of their current state and an indicator showing the rough time until the next state. Question. Will NPCs requiring treatment spawn aboard your ship? Answer. We don't plan on this being a natural occurrence, as having six random NPCs suddenly turn up on your ship requiring treatment without warning would be a pretty unnerving experience. However, NPCs can be collected via drone and treated on your ship as a result of interactions you make, be it specific medical mission participation or as you respond to other relevant beacons. Question. Can the Apollo expel players who refuse to leave after being healed? Answer, the Apollo itself provides no specific method for doing this, but we expect owners will find their own unique ways to remove uncooperative patients. Question, what happens to injured players who refuse to pay after being healed? Answer, in order to prevent abuse, we expect to require players to prepay for treatment. It could be a voluntary choice for conscious players and be tied into the pre-accident request to respawn at an Apollo for those more gravely injured. Question. Search and rescue gameplay involves a lot of looking and finding. How do the scanners on the Apollo compare to scanners on other ships, specifically the Terrapin and Cutlass Red, whose brochures and ship pages advertise that they can also be used as search and rescue craft? Answer. The Terrapin and Cutlass Red both have medium scanners, whereas the Apollo has a larger one, like the Carrick and some of the other bigger ships. While they both do the same things and can be used for the same purpose, large scanners have a higher range and spread and give more accurate details. Question. What tier of beds will capital ship med bays have? Will they still rely on medical ship support? Answer. It depends on the ship in question, but a ship with a dedicated medical bay will generally have a high tier bed to provide full medical support. Bear in mind that this will be of limited use if the ship itself is critically damaged and the crew is injured. It is unlikely that capital ships will have enough high tier beds to support serious recovery for the entire crew simultaneously, with the exception of those dedicated to the role like the Endeavor Hope. Question. Are there injuries that the Apollo cannot fix, but the Endeavor can? Answer. Assuming the Apollo is equipped with the best tier of beds available, then it can fix the same injuries as the Endeavor, as the functionality per bed is the same. However, the Endeavor won't have a loadout as limited as the Apollo, so it can heal more people simultaneously. Question. Will there be more variants of the Apollo? For example, police slash military slash fighter slash transporter? Answer. There are no plans for further RSI Apollo variants outside of the medevac and triage. We want this ship to stay focused on its current role. Question. Can we sleep in a hospital bed to log off? Answer. This is not something we are currently planning on allowing, but we will revisit it as the gameplay comes online. Question. Since this ship only supports two crew members, does it mean that we are limited to a pilot and a doctor as crew? It would be helpful if the crew positions and roles would be fleshed out more for us. Answer. We don't see the roles being as strict as just pilot and doctor, and envisage both players taking part in recovery and treatment. While landed or docked in space, both crew can safely help. However, there is nothing to stop the pilot from leaving their seat to help while the ship is flying, ideally in safe space. Question. If the Apollo has Tier 1 beds to allow respawning, will it also get a beacon for that like the Endeavor? Answer. Yes. The beacon described in the Endeavor Q&A is very similar to our current service beacons and requests for medical assistance will be done through those. So I went and looked up that document so that you don't have to. The relevant portion reads as follows, quote, The Hope class Endeavor opens up an entirely new range of possibilities for the aspiring healer. As previously noted, Endeavors with an attached medical bay may serve as respawn points for players that have died, and the associated hangar bay allows those players to, for a price premium, have one of their existing ships or a new purchase delivered quickly so that they can get right back into the action. The greatest demand for Hope class Endeavors will therefore be in those areas where lots of player deaths are occurring, but of course a valuable and unescorted medical ship in a dangerous area will be a tempting target for pirates and other less savory types. In addition to respawn services, 
services, an endeavor that has enabled its ID beacon, thus broadcasting to others its position, services offered, prices, and reputational information, can also serve as a field hospital for any player or NPC requiring urgent medical attention. In such cases, the party in need would attempt to quickly close the gap with the Endeavor and then either request access to dock in its landing bay or simply EVA into the external hospital pressure lock. Upon arrival in the hospital, it's up to the Endeavor's crew to employ their expertise to try to save the patient, with the ultimate outcome contributing to their medical reputation." End quote. So CIG's multiple context use of the word beacon complicates this a little bit. Remember, at the time when the Endeavor Q&A was written, there were no such things as service beacons. By the time the Apollo Q&A came out, initial implementations of the service beacon system had already made it into game, and the use of the word beacon in the context of Star Citizen almost always now relates to service beacons. After reading this a few times and giving it some thought, it sounds like you will have a toggleable broadcast option for your ship which, when active, allows anyone within range to come to you for medical treatment. I believe that this is what is meant by the use of the word beacon in the Endeavor Q&A. And this is sort of related to the next question, so I'll move on to that one now. Question. Can Apollo owners set their ship to not be an active spawn point when they don't want people arriving on their ship? Answer. For patients who are not in your friend list or party, retrieving them is an active process using the drone. You will have to actively accept missions or go to beacons to recover non-party members, so there's no need to switch your ship off as a spawn point. However, when playing in a party and the requirements to respawn are met, such as distance and capacity, players will automatically be given the option to respawn aboard your ship. This answer apparently contradicts the entire idea that you can set up your ship as a public spawn point. If that's the case, that likely applies to the Endeavor as well. I would like a straight answer out of CIG as to whether or not, as well as under which circumstances, the general public may elect to respawn aboard your ship. If you can only respawn grouped players, this will dramatically change our understanding of how the gameplay functions, as well as essentially hamstring that service as a form of economic activity. The Endeavor was absolutely sold on this promise, and medical gameplay generally has been largely based upon it. In an earlier question from this video, they sort of hinted at a pre-accident request. Does this mean that players will have to periodically update their respawn preferences based on where they travel and which facilities are in the area? Maybe, but we just don't know right now, and that's a big question mark. Question. Will there be a cooldown on respawns for an individual player, or will it be limited by the resources carried in the Apollo? Answer. There will likely be a cooldown period to promote the concept of death having serious consequences, but it will also be limited by the medical resources carried on the Apollo. While you could respawn multiple times on the same Apollo in the same game session, the overall respawn amount will be limited by the resources that that ship has available. Each spawn or recovery will use an amount of the equipment and consumables required for medical gameplay. Question. How do you envision the balance between medical gameplay and time to kill? Answer. Turning players into the kind of bullet sponges that facilitate the different stages of injuries and healing doesn't make for a fun FPS experience. While having a shorter time to kill results in players dying too quickly to use anything other than tier 1 recovery, time to kill will be increased as we bring more features online. However, we will be constantly reviewing and amending the features that contribute to it to ensure all related gameplay feels as fun and immersive as possible. In previous releases, our time to kill was quite high, but the UI gave very little feedback to the players about what was going on. This gave a poor feeling to both parties, but there are lots of systems due to be implemented that will prevent this from happening again. Question. What's the advantage of the Apollo in comparison to a medical bay you can find on ships like the Carrick? Answer. The Apollo's medical bay can hold more people than a non-medical focused ship outside some of the capital ships mentioned above, and its modularity allows it to heal in ways that the vast majority of ships cannot. This doesn't help clarify too much. We'll have to monitor medical facilities on a per ship basis as ships like the Carrick and Polaris move forward in development to see what kind of facilities they'll have available and how upgradable they are. Question. Will Tier 1 medical bays support everything the lower tiers do? Answer. Superior tiers will include all the functionality of lesser tiers. An interesting decision for the player will come in how they configure their bays. Having higher tier beds limits the number of people you can heal, and using them to provide lower tier healing could be a waste of time, space, and resources. Question. Does removing the medical modules increase the amount of SEU that can be used for cargo? Answer. The medical bays cannot be removed, so the maximum cargo capacity will always be 28 SEU. Question. Can bounty hunters and slavers use the drones to retrieve unconscious hostile players? Answer. The drones simply require that the patient be immobilized and unconscious. What you do with them after that is up to you. The Apollo does not lock people into the medical beds, so unless you constantly monitor them, they will either die from their injuries or wake up and become mobile again, then require further restraining. 
Question, will the Apollo have outlaw applications such as harvesting organs and limbs for PCs and NPCs captured to further add depth and profit to bounty hunting slash assassination missions? Answer, organ harvesting is not something we currently plan to support in medical gameplay. <sighs> this is a massive disappointment to me and I'm now reconsidering my pledge. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I'm interested about whether or not there will be elective surgeries available on the Apollo, like cybernetic enhancements for example, maybe down the road. Question, will pulling high g-forces affect patients on board? If so, how are they affected? Answer, we want the patients to stay in a state as stable as possible, and the medical beds are designed to avoid this kind of thing, outside of catastrophic events, obviously. Long-term plans are for all players on board all ships to be subject to g-force relevant to how the ship is being flown. Being restrained in either a seat or bed will mitigate this somewhat. And the last one, question, are medical consumables such as hoses, sterilized needles, drugs, tools, blood, plasma, etc. Stored in the med bay or do they take up space in the cargo hold? Answer. Medical consumables must be stored in the cargo hold, but the plan is to balance it so that even on an intensive medical mission, you'll still have room for regular cargo if you wish. On the flip side, you may want to run with minimal medical supplies just to offer a couple of healing sessions and instead attempt cargo missions to generate additional income that way. So that's it for the Apollo backer Q&A. The degree to which owning a dedicated medical ship will be enjoyable has a lot to do with the questions that were raised from this design document versus the ones which were answered. We know the broad outlines of what tiered beds can do and how players can be injured, but we specifically know very little about the player role in healing and whether or not your ship can offer a public respawn for a fee. The entire thing hinges on these issues. Until we know more about them, I can't recommend that you get this ship. At best, I can recommend that you do as I've done. I picked up a CCU based on my hopes for what medical gameplay will become in the future, but then melted it after the 24-hour cooldown elapsed. It will remain in my buybacks, and if it turns out that there's rewarding gameplay here, I'll look at buying it back and applying it then. But for now, that's where I'm at with respect to the Apollo. Interesting concept, but I just need to know more about the gameplay experience. Anyway, that's it for today's show. I've been Osiris Frost. Thanks for watching. That's all for today's show. Thanks for watching. If you're new to Star Citizen, or you know someone who's thinking of playing, you or they can earn 5,000 UEC on your account by registering with my referral code, which you can find in the show notes down below. If you have any questions, feedback, or episode suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.